Right, we're here today. Try and catch a few of these on uh, on the float in the margins, doing something slightly different. Um, in the fact, I'm using one of our stick floats to catch them on. Hopefully, this is the first of many. And I'll show you later on how I've caught these. Right, I've just put that tench back. So what I'll do now is I'll take the opportunity to go through the gear I'm using today and I'll explain to you why I'm using it. Starting off with the rod and the reel, I've got the new Amiga float rod. It's got a quite fast tip, so it's really good fitting those bites. But obviously we're fishing next to lily pads today, so it's got that real sort of backbone in sort of the mid to the book section to pull them away. Got a reel loaded up with a six pound glide line. The reason why I'm using the glide, even though I'm fishing on the still water, you might think you're better off with a sinking line, is I'm fishing really close in under the rod tips so I don't need to stick that line out the way of the wind because there's no wind to interfere whatsoever um, and it's it's helpful to keep it on top as soon as you get a bite you can pick that line up really really quickly because it's floating on the surface right so coming down now I'm using one of our fine liner stick floats again it's not something you normally use on a lake when you fish on a lake you know think about fishing wagglers and things like that but if you're fishing close in you don't need to sink your line you don't need to use a waggler I mean it's basically like a big pole float really so it's ideal it's got a nice stick top on it you're getting lots of light line bites off these tench and the occasional carp. A nice thick top on it stops you from being pulled under. Just a real basic strung out shotting pattern. If you're fishing big baits, I'm fishing things like double corn, lumps of luncheon meat. There's no need for sort of like fine presentations. You're not fishing on drop. And because I'm fishing next to snags, I'm fishing this six pound glide mono straight through to a size 14 super steel barbus all rounder, which is sharp enough to hit those bites but it's also strong enough to land all these fish you've seen me catch today. If I wouldn't have had this rod, I wouldn't have got it out of the bushes, would I? Bait today has been really, really simple to be honest with you. Um, I brought I brought the usual tench fishing baits. I brought red maggots, which I haven't used because the rod has been a bit of a nuisance. Uh, I've got myself a tin of uh, F1 corn. It's great to use it in single, singles or doubles if small fish have been a nuisance. I've got some of these pro expanders uh, in 8mm. Again, a really good change for tench bait if things are a little bit difficult. But I've had the majority of fish today on, on luncheon meat. But it's luncheon meat with a slight difference in that I, uh, I cut it up the night before. I use a knife at home, so it's all different sizes, it's all different sizes, so I can use a bigger piece or a smaller piece for now it's fishing. And what I do is I just pop it all in the plastic bag, cover it with some of this uh, Sonner Bait Statues Green Ground Bait, just tie the bag up, pop it in the fridge overnight, and you get this lovely coated meat. And what the, the ground bait does is it slightly toughens it up. So if, you, if you're casting out or you can even miss a bite, you don't have to change your bait every time you come back. And that's been what's caught the majority of my fish today. So it just, just shows you the value of bringing sort of different sorts of baits. I mean, I always, red maggots are always my go-to whenever I'm tench fishing. But obviously the, the small roach and rub just all over me today. So within about five minutes, I knew that wasn't the bait today. Switch to corn. Um, and again, you know, the roach of the rub got slightly bigger, but it's not really what I want to catch. Uh, change to eight mil pellets. Um, and again, I still can't get through those small fish really. The, the problem is, you know, a lot of these lakes now that we fish are just full of small roach and rud. 
And then finally, um, I changed changed over to me Thatcher's mate, and it turned out that that was the one today that worked. However, on other days, you know, the corn can outfish the meat, or the maggots can outfish the corn or the meat. It's just worthwhile bringing a change of baits because you never know which one's going to work on the day. And so all I'm feeding is is I'm putting a couple of little balls of ground bean to start off with, uh, a couple of little balls of Thatcher's green, and the um, krill and squid, making the balls as hard as I can. So I'm not attracting those roach and run too much. And I'm just feeding a few of the uh, four mil F1 feed pellets over the top. But again, what I'm doing is if I'm getting a lot of attention from roach and rud, I tend to feed a lot heavier because I'm sure sometimes a lot of them don't get to bottom. So every now and again, I'll put two, two good handfuls in to make sure some bait gets to bottom. And I'm feeding very little of what I'm actually fishing on the hook. I want it to be like a standalone hook bait. there, I think so, isn't it? Yeah. Stuck around that pad. That's a bit of carp, this. It's not been, uh, it's not been scat enough for a tench. Right, it's not what we came for, it's not a tench, but it certainly put up a fantastic fight on the float rodent margins. So we'll slip this back and hopefully the next fish will be a tench. Right, I'm going to take a second now to talk about the spot I'm fishing. All I've basically done is I've plumbed up at the deepest part of the swim at the bottom of the shelf and I've worked my way up till I found a nice shallow flat area straight to the lily pads as well which is uh, which is handy um, it's warmer now these fish are going to want to be in shallow water so all I've done is I've just plumbed up until I found that shallow part of the swim as long as it's not right next to the snags that's you know it's too close for them and all I'm doing is just loose feeding a few pellets over the top fishing a piece of meat on the hook and these tension just coming straight to it I'll drop down the shelf there, you can see the float goes underneath. It keeps from going so it's far too deep there. If I slowly move the plummet across, you'll watch it slowly getting shallower and shallower as I come up that shelf. And then I'll hit the top of that shelf next to these pads. And it's just exactly the same depth there all the way across now. And also when I fill the plummet down, it's rock hard on the bottom, which would indicate to me that there's been fish feeding there in the past. So all I need to do is make sure I'll just find that line where that shelf drops away, just about there. So as long as my float doesn't go past the end of these pads, I know I'm fishing on top of that shelf.
it's a tench I think. It's only a little one though. I'm sure it's a tench. Yeah, it is. It's a little baby. Like that. Perfect, isn't it? What do you think? <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Pop a little bar of soap. Right, we've had a cracking day's tench fishing today. Just finish it off with this fish. Hold this one up. It's been great fun on float tackle. All caught on the tactics and the methods that I've shown you today. Plenty of bites, plenty of fish, which is what it's all about. No monsters, but great fun on the right kind of gear.